By 2027, AI will eliminate 83 million jobs globally. I really worry, particularly at the entry level, that the AI models are very much at the center of what, what an entry level human worker would do. Because it's happening so fast that yes, people will adapt, but they, they, they may not adapt fast enough. This year alone, over 73,000 tech workers have already been laid off. Now, just last week, Microsoft announced 9,000 workers were being let go. If you are in tech right now, you have felt this shift. The anxiety when you see AI powered in every job position. The sinking feeling when your company announces a restructuring. Maybe you have already been replaced. Maybe your friends have, and you're wondering if you are next. The good news is that you can prepare for this AI bloodbath if you know what to do. And most people are preparing completely wrong. Hi, I'm Suleiman. I've been in tech for more than a decade. And in the last five years, I've been running my own tech companies in consulting, software, and education. What I'm going to show you today isn't just how to survive these AI layoffs. It's how to position yourself to thrive whilst everyone else is getting displaced. Now, most advice tells you to just work harder and update your resume. But that's playing defense. I'm going to show you how to go on the offense so that by the end, you'll have a complete clear roadmap to becoming layoff proof. Now, before we talk about how to protect yourself, you need to understand how fast this is actually moving because the timeline has just compressed dramatically. In January, 2024, experts were saying that AI might start affecting white collar jobs by 2030. Then they said it's by 2027. And if you listen to Sam Altman, he's saying that we've basically solved the path to AGI already. That's not a gradual shift and it's caught everyone off guard. And it happens because three things converged at once. First, AI costs have dropped dramatically. We're talking about a 280-fold reduction from November 2022 to October 2024. Second, this cost collapse led to mass adoption. The number of organizations using generative AI in at least one business area more than doubled between 2023 and 2024. It went from experimental to essential almost overnight. Thirdly, the barrier to entry for AI integration has become stupidly low. Companies no longer need massive tech teams or budgets to implement AI. They can deploy solutions in weeks and not years. This means companies are fast tracking their AI timelines, finding their own breakthroughs and laying off workers as a result. Anyway, that's what Wall Street wants you to believe. But what's the truth about why these layoffs are happening so fast? Yes, AI is getting better. But right now, if you actually try to use AI in production environments, you know the truth. It still makes a lot of errors, AI code is largely trash, AI hallucinates, and it can't be trusted without any sort of human oversight. So are we close to AGI? No, we're not even close. I've worked with these AI systems extensively, and they still have massive limitations. But if you're thinking, see, you know, AI isn't ready to replace us yet, I'm safe, then you've missed the point entirely. Because there are two things happening that are driving these layoffs, and neither of them have much to do with AI actually being ready. Firstly, companies over hired during the pandemic and are now laying off people because they'd rather hire H1B visa employees for around 17 to 34% less pay for similar roles. And it's just easier to justify these layoffs under the barrier of AI transformation. Secondly, companies are firing employees because they're going all in on AI investment to pump their stock market valuations. Since ChatGPT launched, mentions of AI workforce and AI agents on company earning calls have skyrocketed, increasing by nearly 800%. Just look at Y Combinator right now. They are literally just funding ChatGPT wrappers slap on an AI interface and call it revolutionary. The real value creation and profitability isn't there. But the thing is, tech companies don't care if AI isn't making them money right now. OpenAI is projected to lose $44 billion between 2023 to 2028. But nobody cares as long as investors keep pumping in money and the AI bubble doesn't pop. Now, with that said, there's an uncomfortable truth that I do want to discuss. And quite frankly, some of you won't like it. You see, from my experience working in big tech companies and working with government agencies and even startups, I found that most people weren't really doing any real work anyway. 
not even the bare minimum. They were just coasting. And the best example that I can give is when Elon took over Twitter and fired 75% of the staff. Guess what happened? Twitter kept working fine. This is why these AI layoffs don't actually break these companies because most of the workers being fired typically aren't creating the real value or doing actual work anyway. And what we are witnessing is a complete restructuring of how work gets done. For the last 30 to 40 years, we've organized jobs around human limitations. What one person could handle in about eight to 10 hours. But AI doesn't have these limitations. So companies are preparing for a different world of work. Instead of hiring a marketing manager, they are thinking that we need content creation, data analysis, campaign optimization, and strategic thinking. AI handles the first three, and then they hire one human for strategic thinking. Instead of a team of financial analysts, they want financial modeling, market research, risk assessment, and judgment calls. AI does the first three. One senior person makes the judgment calls. Now, as you can see, this shift is creating what I call a capability economy. Similar to how Microsoft CEO Satya says in the future, companies will hire an employee and all of their AI agents are with them. A single engineer who understands how to leverage AI can one day in the future deliver the output of an entire traditional team. This also means that people who don't adapt today become essentially, you know, unemployable. Which brings me to how you can protect yourself. Step one, audit your current skills. Take an honest assessment of your role and your skills. Break down everything that you do into specific tasks. Then you want to categorize them. What could AI do today? What requires human judgment? What involves complex problem solving or creativity? And here you want to be brutally honest. If most of your job could be automated, then you need to act immediately. Step two, reposition around high value skills. Look at what companies are actually hiring for right now. The roles that are seeing massive demands are cloud engineering, AI engineering, data engineering, cloud security, and even cybersecurity. So you want to start pivoting and developing expertise in one or two of these areas because it's likely that the skills that got you a last job won't get you your next one. And because you are in tech, it comes with the nature of the industry. The rug will get pulled from underneath you without any notice. But here is the thing. Even if you do all of this perfectly, you're still playing defense. And in this economy, this isn't enough. You have to go on the offense. The only way to really prepare yourself for an AI layoff is by providing yourself with a security blanket. And there's only one real security blanket in this economy, building a business based on your own domain expertise. And that's exactly what I did. I built multiple businesses of my expertise in cloud and AI, because the reality is these companies will look to fire you as soon as they can save a dollar. You need to understand how to create value and then sell your knowledge to the marketplace directly. Firstly, I'm treating my YouTube channels as the most important business asset. YouTube videos will bring you customers for life. And if you think it's too late to start, well, I literally launched this channel from scratch about a month ago and it's not too late. You just need the right strategy and the right guidance. Secondly, I'm documenting everything that I know about building tech companies and what it's actually like in the trenches every single day. Most people have big agencies or partners. They have wealth of experience of building and growing businesses. I have got a small team and we do everything ourselves. No partners and no agencies doing any work for us. And then we keep our frameworks, the strategies and the mistakes to avoid. This then becomes my moat. Knowledge that can't be replicated by AI because it's based on real world experience. People will find your content trust your expertise and pay you directly for the solutions to their problems. This provides you the ultimate security blanket. When you own your audience, when you can generate revenue directly from your expertise, the fear of AI replacing you just disappears. Now look, we can sugarcoat all of this and be nice about it. We can say, hey, it's not your fault. Big tech is to blame. It's all Sam Altman's fault. And there is definitely some truth to that. Maybe you didn't do anything wrong. But even if we blame everyone else for the situation that we are in and take no responsibility, which is obviously a little bit ignorant, the reality is, even if it's not your fault, it's still your problem. And it's not going away. It's only getting worse. So you have to start changing. Because what got you into your last job won't get you to your next one. The rules have completely changed. When the iPhone launched in 2000. 
2007, every mobile company could have said that it's not our fault. Smartphones are disrupting our business. You know, and to be honest, they might have been right, but BlackBerry, Nokia, and Motorola still pretty much went out of business because they didn't adapt fast enough. The same choice is in front of you right now. And I get it's uncomfortable and there's so much uncertainty in tech because the AI bloodbath is real. Sam Altman and basically all of big tech will be the first to replace you. And they are going all in on doing it. They are spending hundreds of billions of dollars with one goal, making human workers obsolete and chasing profits. And the thing is, you can carry on on this employee treadmill and hope for the best. But hope isn't a strategy. Are we close to AGI? No, we are not. But are they trying their best to bring it out as soon as possible? Absolutely. They are throwing everything that they have at it. And here is what most people don't understand. Sam Altman wants you hooked on his tools. He doesn't want you to become successful and work for yourself or helping people for the greater humanity. He wants to become the most powerful person in the world and he wants all of us to be his servants. Every time that you use ChatGPT, you're making yourself more dependent and making him more powerful. And to be honest, I don't trust this guy. So you got to fight back. And the only way to fight back is to take ownership of where you are, what your current state is, and build out a strategic plan and start building for the life that you actually want to live. As soon as you start, the fears that you have slowly start disappearing away. And this isn't about being anti-AI because we all know that it truly is revolutionary technology and the productivity gains are real. To me, the moment that you build your own business, working for yourself and selling your expertise, at that point, you don't need security from the job market because you become the security. Good luck and I'm rooting for you.